So this morning, the ancestors are giving me a nice, nice, good read this morning. And it really started last night when I was talking to a friend about the level of um, stuckness I was feeling. And when I say stuckness, I don't mean like blocked, because when I say it's flow, things are flowing. When I say stuck, I meant that literally yesterday, as I was preparing for some very important things, I found myself in the middle of self-sabotaging myself. (laughs) You know, this idea of hesitation, procrastination, and self-sabotage is being played out in front of me externally. I'm seeing it other people as I am mirroring it myself. And so this morning as I divined, or or let me just say last night, I was talking to a friend and then uh, the ancestor sent me a message of 2111. Now 2111 is the energy of two, which is intuition, and the energy of one, which is moving forward, pressing forward, self-identity, action, it's all of that. And so the really the message of 2111 that the angels, my deities were trying to send me is, girl, you know, just go ahead and do it. Stop, but don't hes- stop hesitating, stop procrastinating, stop focusing on other things. You have the skills, the things are in front of you. Just let's move forward and get this ish done. <laughs> Your way is certain. Your way is paved. You don't have to be afraid. It's already done. What are you doing? Get up off your butt and move. I'm quite literally looking at a book in front of me that I haven't seen in years. I pulled off the shelf. And in this moment, coincidentally, this is how the ancestors work. Get off your butt by Sean Stevenson. You know, this book was... uh, it's so hilarious oh my god the ancestors are so funny i haven't had i haven't seen this book since i worked at a a a retailer a whole foods market (laughs) we did an event with him how to end self-sabotage and stand up for yourself sometimes i love the ancestors so much it's so creepy this is how they work they send you little messages so funny self-sabotage And so this morning in a reading, I use bibliomancy. Bibliomancy is when you open a book to a page and there lies a message. And so I open to a new book that I just purchased called The Women of the Bible Speak, The Wisdom of 16 Women and Their Lessons for Today. This is by Shannon Breen not familiar with this artist I randomly went to the big store with my sons and I found this book and thought it was very interesting you know everyone knows I'm a lover of the bible and I wanted to you know see uh put some glorification on the women in the bible that do not get any type of respect or get their stories told which adds to the one dimensionality of women You know, we look at women as just very one dimensional, you know, very nurturing, you know, the mother, the seducer, whatever. But we don't talk enough about the woman as the warrior. And so I opened up the page and it says, Deborah and Jael, women of valor. Now, being a lover of the Bible, I'm so glad I got this book because there's so much about Deborah that I had no idea and so many things that I have in common with her. Number one, interesting enough, Deborah's name means bee. (laughs) And even in the book, it says that her name meant bee and how appropriate as she stung her enemies, but brought sweetness and refreshment like honey to her people. Just like. Mama Oshun. (laughs) 
So I immediately knew that the ancestors had something to say with me as I am an incarnation of one of the avatars of Oshun, Oshun Olordi, the revolutionary. And so to make a long story short, we find Deborah in the book of Judges. Now, just uh, so you know, the people of Israel were begging God for judges to help them basically deliver them out of the hands of the enemy. But I love how this book really, how this page starts because it really resonates how even in our own, and I talked about this in an earlier read about that baby manifestation in that moment when you realize that, damn, you know, you really have a lot. You've manifested a lot and you are not grateful. You are not being in the moment. I even said what the cosmos must think of me to have manifested what I prayed for for so long and to not have even been aware of it and still be in this longing and wanting state without being in gratitude for the things that have showed up to my life and we find in the book of judges that the people of Israel were going through the same thing sometimes we can get blind and we can forget about all the goodness that God has done in our lives when you just look around for a second in your life it's not really all bad is something good and that good can be built upon it can be leveled up it can be turned into amazing victories and blessings you know really we have to look at the book of judges and really what this whole thing is really trying to tell me is that these people had been delivered out of incredible circumstances in the book she says that God knocked down the walls of Jericho before them he gave them their share in the land of flowing milk and honey he renewed his covenants with them forever and they swore to follow him in his laws to the end of time and beyond How many times do we do this when God does something great in our lives and God delivers us? We say, oh, my God, I would never find myself in this situation again. Thank you, God. Thank you for your blessings. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, But just like the people of Israel, when things went awry after all of those wonderful things and after God had displayed all those wonderful things and they like they lost faith. You know, we have to use our mountaintop moments, the times when God does the greatest. We have to really memorialize those things. We have to journal those things. We have to imprint those into our bodies and our souls so that when times of strife comes, we can go back to those moments and say, well, golly, if God delivered me from that, for surely the universe, the ancestors, the deities, the great God, Olodumari, would deliver me from this as well. We have to be able to stay in God as daily life demands. And so we find ourselves in this story of Deborah. We find a model of a woman who had great faith and who did not tarry or hesitate when God brought her a word. First of all, Deborah was extraordinary because she was a woman, but she was designated as a judge and she was looked at as a fair judge. Okay. It says that Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim and the people of Israel came to her for judgment see you know the judge was in that times not only a person who brought down spiritual or brought down disputes but she was also a spiritual leader and so eventually Israelites they were oppressed by in this book we're going to focus specifically on Sisera a king who was oppressing the people of Israel and Deborah got sick and tired of it. She saw that her people were oppressed. She saw that they had given up. They were on bad roads. They had poor infrastructure. They were suffering kind of like people are right now today, suffering under the hands of 
a wealthy man because you see Sisera unlike the people of Israel who were agricultural people who lived off of the land you know Sisera was wealthy he had a, a wealthy army he had chariots which were made out of steel this was something that was not readily available to the poor people of Israel they didn't have access to all of these things and so Deborah got a word from God that it was time for her to take things into her own hands so she calls to this great judge uh to this great warrior barack and says to him hey um, player you know there's some stuff going on you know i know it's looking dire but if you go ahead and get twenty thousand men from over here you go get twenty thousand men from over here then or ten thousand sorry and ten thousand you know we be able to do a little science something and we can i, I feel like uh, you know i know that god has told us she said to Barack so clear she uh told him a hey, player uh she didn't actually go and candy coat anything she said go gather your men at Mount Tabor taking 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and 10,000 from the tribe of Zebulun she drew up a plan she didn't say hey she said the Lord the God of Israel commands you to go do this and go do this and do this. She said, I want you to do this. She knew who she was in God. She knew the authority who God has given to her. And that is an authority that God was calling me like, boo, know your authority, know your power. Know who you are. Part of self-sabotaging is you not realizing how powerful you are. Why am I going to do this? It's going to fail. Don't nobody really want this. And you and, and, and subconsciously you start uh, having a self-fulfilled prophecy of giving up like the people of Israel. But we have to be called like Deborah to be people of valor. I know my ancestors was reading me. Now, Barak was like I right, cool I go only if you go if you don't go I ain't going wow <laughs> okay Deborah said that's fine um and look how she checked him about his hesitation like why are you putting reins on God's word I didn't say that I needed you I said the Lord Joe God commanded you and then you make a negotiations player <laughs> Okay. So she tells him, All right, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead you to glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. I'm going to go with you. But since you're hesitating and since you're putting negotiations on God, you who had the authority to kill the commander, you will not have that pride. A woman is going to take that. A woman gonna go ahead and she prophesied that because you hesitated how many times does our hesitation and does us negotiate and adding things onto God's word actually have us get on a little bit of a missing spree Barack missed out on the ultimate victory for the commander of a army which is to kill another commander of the army because he hesitated and tried to put negotiations on God's word you got to be careful about that when God says go, when the ancestors say go, when the Orisha say go, then you better get your ass and you better go. This is the Lord. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? Let me tell you something. Reading this woman of valor... <laughs> Looking, reading this story so much so it resonated with me. I'm going to preach about this on Black Church this Sunday about Deborah and Jael and why we have to get out of this self sabotaging behaviors and start standing up for ourselves. God has revealed so much to me in the last 24 hours. I've seen people that I have read and I've told them to walk into your destiny and that you were supposed to be a, a healer and those people did it and now they have more followers or more success than I have had I ain't about to be mad at that praise God to the most be my prophecies were correct but what God is trying to tell me is that what do you need to happen in your life this is something that we need to be do not hesitate people let's move forward in our purpose we will no longer self-sabotage I shake